the individual that you guys see on my screen has done something that I think sets fathers back. I think it sets black fathers back also as far as trying to get a good image in people's mind because we're already dealing with so many different things as dads and I don't really think that we get as much respect as we should being parents. But this really just gives people pause behind how bad this was. And I got a lot of things to say. I don't want you guys to be offended. So if this is your first time here, I might give you this type of content. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. So I think I've been very fair to the audience and to YouTube. And I think that what we try to do is we try to spread awareness and be in an educational fashion. But I do got some opinions that sometimes bother people. The de and I'm getting this story from illicitdeeds.com. So thank you so much for the article. The death of a 12-year-old Wisconsin boy. This boy was found extremely malnourished inside a home and is now being investigated as a homicide. So initially it wasn't. Now it is, according to the Milwaukee County Coroner's Office. I felt like I was stunned a little bit. You think everything has been good this whole time. So I would definitely stay. So I, I would definitely say stunned for me by the uh, by a person by the name of Jordan Robinson, the brother of this boy by the name of Jakari Robinson, who was only 12 years old. Jakari Robinson's family was grief stricken Wednesday outside the house where the 12 year old boy was found with 10 siblings in different homes. Let me say that again. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, eight, nine, ten siblings in different homes. It was sometimes difficult to stay in touch, but Jakari's family still could not believe that he was gone. Where do I even start? I don't want to offend you guys. I don't want to get flagged. I don't want to lose my monetization. But damn, can I at least be honest? Can I be honest? Like, I hate seeing people in the comment section. Oh, you hate your black people, Just Jay. Why you got to be bashing on people, y'all? Can we get a hashtag, Babies for Benefits? I need y'all to start typing in, in the chat, in the live chat, some of our hashtags. It ain't got to be all. Let me see. I got some. I have hashtag live by the thug, die by the thug. Die by the thug, hashtag stupid isn't stupid thugs, hashtag when you date thugs, you date death, hashtag TTO, hashtag TTT, hashtag hood holes love hood dick, hashtag stupid names equals stupid things, hashtag babies for benefits. The reason why I have a hashtag like that, and that's an AFC hashtag, by the way, is because why the hell would anybody have 10 children? I'm going to just leave, leave that on the surface. Have 10 children that you clearly can't take care of because it, here's what usually happens. After you have the first kid or two, if those kids are taken out of the home and put in other homes, these people turn around, they get bored, they get horny, and they start having other kids. And those kids get taken, they turn around and have more kids because the more kids they have, the more Section 8 food stamps and benefits that they get, right? Then those kids get taken and then guess what they got to do? Because they're going to lose their benefits. They turn around and have more kids. This is why I have a hashtag where I believe that maybe we should have to have a license to produce children. Because you would have to think that at some point you would examine these alleged parents' situation, look at their house, look at their income. If they can't afford to take care of themselves or have a proper roof over their head or if the, the inside of their house looks like a pigsty, why would you allow them to keep having children? I think it, you should have to have a license to produce children. Why? Because you're going to bring people into this world. You're going to bring humans into this world that are going to suffer, that can't take care of themselves. Well, like, what, what, what are these kids going to do? A four-year-old child can't go out and go work a job and take care of themselves and bring in food and can't do anything. They're dependent on the parents. The, this is... 
if you ask me, this is all the mother and the father's fault, the biological mother and biological father, let alone any step parents or cousins, aunties, or um, foster parents. Everybody failed this boy. Ten siblings. I think that's just dumb. You had that many kids. That's just not smart. To my knowledge, my mom said everything was good. Jordan Robinson said that's the brother. We always asked about him, but of course, to my knowledge, everything was good in our books. Milwaukee police were called to a home on Tuesday night, one hour after they arrived. The boy was pronounced dead, and I need to warn you guys. Where is my warning yet? I need to put a warning up here. The following video contains material that may be harmful or traumatizing to some audience. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm not going to show any pictures, but I am going to tell what actually happened in the state that they found this boy in. This baby boy's body was so badly malnourished and decomposed that the medical examiner's office was unable to positively identify him at first. So he was in a house, dead, decomposing, People knew that this body and this stench was in the house and they continued to just ignore it. Everybody understand where I'm coming from? That's not like somebody didn't know. Another one of Jakari's brothers had gone to the house because he hadn't heard anything. So he took it upon himself to go to the house and check out and see what's going on. He said, we will never get the, well, I, can, I guess I can skip that. I'll let you hear it in the interview. One day later, all the windows and doors of the house were covered with plywood. The death was first ruled suspicious, but is now being investigated as a homicide. Jakari's brother said that the boy lived with his biological father, but Milwaukee police made no mention of anyone connected to the death, despite the uh, homicide investigation, which that's actually going to change. The question here has always, the question has always been there. Where has he been and hoping to get him uh, get him over there and see him because we miss him, Jordan Robinson said. The neighbors near the home did not want to speak on camera, but one of them did say that they didn't know that people lived in this house, which is very weird. They didn't have any idea anybody was even occupying. They thought this house was abandoned. For now, they await answers. Jakari's family is trying to focus on what made the boy special, his smile, everything about him. He come light up the whole room, uh, Jordan Robinson said. You feel loved by him. He was a good kid. Now, let me give you the update from lawandcrime.com, and thank you for the article. Authorities in Wisconsin are searching for a 45-year-old father, this fool right here, 45 years old, after the decomposing body of his emaciated, which means they starved him out. 12-year-old son was found inside his apartment with an array of suspicious injuries, including both of this boy's arms and several of his ribs were recently broken. Let me guess. He fell in the bathtub and broke his ribs and broke his arms, right? Is that what they're going to tell us? Let me guess. He was jumping on the bed and fell off the bed two feet off the floor and broke both of his arms and broke his ribs, right? That's what happened. Let me guess. He walked in the middle of the street and got hit by a car and it was a hit and run accident. And that's how he broke both of his arms and his ribs, right? Hmm. The reason why I mentioned those crazy scenarios is because those are stories that actually came out and found out that they were lies that caretakers told happened to these kids that actually didn't happen. Just saying, that's real talk. Both arms and ribs. A warrant for Roman J. Moy, M-O-Y-E, was issued Saturday in connection to the death of young Jakari Robinson, authorities announced. Moy is facing one count each of chronic neglect of a child, consequences death, chronic neglect of a child, consequences bodily harm, chronic neglect of a child, and failure to report the death of a child. According to a probable cause affidavit, officers with the City of Milwaukee Police Department at about 6.15 p.m. on October the 10th, which was about eight days ago, depending on when you're watching this video, responded to a dead-on entry call at an apartment complex located in the 4100 block of North Elm, Elmhurst Road. 
The caller told the emergency dispatcher that there was a deceased 12-year-old child located inside the res residence in an advanced state of decomposition. I believe that it was still people living there also during the time that this boy was dead. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Upon arriving at the scene, first responders located the caller who identified himself as Moy's 22-year-old son, identified in court documents as J.M. J.M. told police his three younger brothers who are ages 17, 15, and 12 typically all lived in the apartment with Moy, the father, but noted that for the last few weeks, the 17 and 15-year-olds had both been staying with their mother while the youngest, J.R., remained under Moy's care. According to police documents, J.M. said that he visited his father a few days prior and noticed that he was acting abnormal and repeatedly taking deep breaths. But police, ne police but told police he never entered the apartment. With his father continuing to act strange, J.M. told police he returned to the apartment again on October the 10th to check on Moy's well-being and let himself in when Moy failed to answer the door. J.M. went into the residence and looked around, but nobody was home. Like, why don't they mention how that place smelled? Like, if the boy was dead, you know what that that place probably smelled really, really bad, probably even before this. J.M. went back into the residence and looked for some belongings that were important to the defendant, the affidavit states. As J.M. entered the, the living room, J.M. noticed that there was a foot protruding from the covers on the living room floor. J.M. immediately yelled out because J.M. knew it was J.R.'s body. J.M. pulled the cover back and observed J.R.'s face in an advanced state of decomposition with maggots present. If you ask me, this father probably beat this boy to death. Starved him, blamed it on some alleged bad behavior, and then left him there to die. Just why even have kids? I, I just don't even understand that. To put kids through stuff like this just doesn't make any sense. When you just, you have every right to not be a parent. You could just put your dick up. You don't have to have sex. You don't have to have unprotected sex. You don't have to have testicles. You could get fixed. Like, why had as many kids and you can't even take care of yourself? JM explained to police that Moy, a few years ago, claimed to have been diagnosed with cancer and claimed that it progressed in the last few months, saying he does not have long to live. This made J.M. want to spend more time with his father, but Moy was being evasive of late. And I think that's a lie. That his son didn't have no damn cancer. J.M. also described Moy as a harsh punisher, but claimed he did not use physical punishment often. If you're from the black community, then you know that that's a lie. You know that he was getting his ass whooped. You already know this. Moy had allegedly told the victim's mother that the victim had been acting out and stealing food as of late. And you guys know how I feel about that. If food is in the house, children should have access to it and eat it. Like, I don't, I don't, I would never consider my child stealing food that's sustenance and i want you guys to also remember that they said that he was e he, that he was emaciated 54 pounds at 12 years old that sounds like he was starved out he was prevented from eating and his body didn't have a choice and it went into survival mode and he had to eat something so he went against his dad's wishes and went and found the food that was in the house just so he could live he was hungry thank you that's ridiculous. Stealing food. I just hate hearing that. I don't ever want to hear a parent say that. The victim's 15-year-old sister told investigators that her father punishes the victim for stealing food. The defendant will pop JR or whoop JR 
police wrote in an affidavit citing their interview with the child. Homicide detectives took over the scene saying upon entering Moy's home, there was an overwhelming smell of mold, feces, and decay. The kitchen had a large pile of garbage located in the center of the floor. The kitchen table was covered in garbage. The kitchen sink was covered in what appeared to be mold. There was molded food on the counters of the kitchen. The refrigerator appeared to be functional but was filled with molded food. The bathroom was filled with garbage and the toilet was filled with, with human feces. The vanity sink and the shower were covered in mold. Detectives say that the victim's decaying body appeared to be extremely malnourished and noted that he had maggots covering his face and mouth. That means he had been dead for a while. A subsequent autopsy determined that the victim had recently fractured a right humerus, noting that the break was very large and in an, in an irregular pattern for a fracture. The left humerus also appeared to be fractured along with two ribs that were in the process of healing when the victim died. The 12-year-old's body weighed only 54, 54 pounds at the time of his autopsy. Everybody catch that? And he just got that dumb look on his face. Let me see if I can back that up. I want y'all to take a look. Like, it's just no soul. Like, he doesn't look like he has a soul at all. An ultimate ruling on the boy's cause of death is pending the results of several additional tests. So, I'm pretty sure some of that's going to include blunt force trauma. So, the next time we report this, I'm sure we'll be able to find that out too. Authorities noted that Moy may face additional charges at that time based on the on the results of the test and further investigations. So the way that that's going to work is if it seems that he might have inflicted this damage on this child, they're more than likely going to bump this up to a murder charge. And that's what I'm hoping for, because I want harsh justice and I want justice against that man and justice for that baby boy. Let me give you guys the fair usage real quick. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. We got a good amount of people here watching right now. If y'all guys would do me a favor and please hit that thumbs up. What it does is we're going to have one thumb up for everybody watching. It shares this video, lets more people know that we're live or where you can find it and share in this story. So please, please don't forget, please hit that thumbs up. Here we go. This warrant has now been issued for the father of a 12-year-old Milwaukee boy found dead in his home. Romeo and Moy is wanted for neglect, causing the death of his son, Jakari Robinson. Investigators say they found the young boy decomposing inside his home at 39th and Elmhurst, just north of Capitol Drive. 12 News' Hannah Hilliard is there tonight. And Hannah, you have new disturbing details about what police say they found inside that home. Right, Patrick. So outside the home, you now have all of these spray painted messages, including rest in peace, Kari. Inside, investigators say they found disgusting living conditions, garbage and mold practically everywhere, as well as non-functioning plumbing. They also found that 12 year old boy covered in a blanket on the living room floor. As family and friends of 12 year old Jakari Robinson, are mourning the tragic loss of the little boy. I don't really know much, but I really just looking for answers. Closure and my family to heal at sick. Police say his father, Romuan Moy, spent the weekend on the run. A just released criminal complaint says Moy kept Jakari away from the rest of his family for several months, homeschooling him. It was fun to be around him that time I got to be around him. I wish it was more and I wish I got to tell him a little more. We worried another brother went inside the home October 10th. He told investigators he, quote, observed a human foot protruding from covers on the living room floor. He realized it was Jakari in an advanced stage of decomposition. The medical examiner says the 12 year old was 54 pounds and appeared malnourished. He's the only one that saw him, so I'm pretty sure he's traumatized by his image and that what he saw. The complaint says the older brother experienced, quote, an overwhelming smell of mold, feces, and decay inside the home. The kitchen table covered in garbage, 
the refrigerator filled with molded food, and in the bathroom, the toilet filled with human feces. Police also say Moy's mother texted her son and told him to turn himself in. Hannah, the district attorney is charging him with felony child neglect and failing to report a death. They do say that more charges could be coming. Right, Patrick. So the criminal complaint says the autopsy revealed that Jakari had fractured bones in both his arms and ribs. And as for his mother, she told investigators she had not physically seen Jakari in three years, but also mentioned that the father recently reached out to her, telling him, telling her that Jakari was being punished for misbehaving and stealing food. Hannah Hilliard reporting in Milwaukee tonight. Hannah, thank you. And here's another look at Romeo and Moy's picture. If you know where he is, Milwaukee police want to hear from you. You can also find the photo and past story. And I think his name is Roman. Ramon, Roman. I think it's Roman. I could be wrong, but nonetheless, that's the fool. I mean, the bitch. I'm, I mean, sorry, the father that they're looking for. Excuse me. Here we go. New at five, our first look inside the tragic life and death of a 12 year old boy. Prosecutors have charged Roman Moy with the neglect and killing of his son, Jakari Robinson. Jakari Robinson was found malnourished and partially decomposed in his own home. Police say conditions inside the home were unimaginable. Now they are searching for the man they say is responsible. Jenna Ray reports. It's quiet here on North Elmhurst Street, but images are speaking louder than words. The home where Jakari Robinson was found dead, now covered in spray paint, what seems like a tribute to the 12 year old. The home rented by Jakari's father, who's now nowhere to be found. 12 year old Jakari Robinson was found by his older brother last Tuesday, but according to a criminal complaint, the story doesn't start there. Prosecutors say in early October, Jakari's older brother had been trying to see him for days. The brother told police he stopped by the home to talk to their father, Roman Moy, and Moy was acting strange. Days later, the brother tried to go back again. The complaint says Moy was evasive then too. On October 10th, the brother and his girlfriend went to Moy's home. Knock now, I know some people I know some people in the chat heard that they hadn't seen this boy in gears. And you're asking, how is that possible? The way that's possible is by having 10 children. And they're split up and they all live in separate homes. It's impossible. It's impossible to properly keep up with everybody. I have two siblings. And I have trouble keeping up with my brother and my sister. Right? Between me trying to be a father to my daughters, both of my daughters, and then be a, bro a brother to my brother and my sister, keeping contact with my mom and dad, it's hard just with that small group of people. Let alone 10 children in a bunch of different households. That's why I say... It's not smart to have that many kids because you can't divide your attention up that many ways properly. Even if all those kids lived under one roof, somebody is going to get neglected. Probably a lot of people are. It could happen financially. It could happen as far as attention, how you raise them. It could make you resentful of certain kids. It's just too many human beings to have. repeatedly and no one answered so they let themselves in the complaint says the brother was struck by a strong odor coming from inside the home when walking through the house he saw a foot sticking out from under a blanket in the living room it was jakari the brother and police say jakari's body was in an advanced state of decomposition and severely malnourished weighing only 54 pounds at the time of the autopsy jakari's siblings told police they were all homeschooled by moy and that Moy punished Jakari for stealing food. The siblings also told police they hadn't been home for the past two weeks because Moy, quote, needed to take care of something. The siblings allegedly were staying with their mother, who said she hadn't seen Jakari in years. When police talked to Moy's mother, she told police that she hadn't seen Jakari in six years and that Moy never mentioned Jakari to his mother. After finding out that Jakari was dead, police say Moy's mother texted him 
When police talked to Moy's mother, she told police that she hadn't seen Jakari in six years. Allegedly were staying with their mother, who said she hadn't seen Jakari in years. When police talked to Moy's mother, she told police that she hadn't seen Jakari in six years and that Moy never mentioned Jakari to his mother. After finding out that Jakari was dead, police say Moy's mother texted him saying, quote, you may as well turn yourself in. You are going to prison for life. We did speak with family members earlier Monday who just found out their dad is being charged in relation to Jakari's death. They didn't want to talk to us on camera. Police say they're still investigating and that more criminal charges could be coming. In Mo and good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Charles Benson. Take a good look at the picture of this little boy. His name is Jakari Robinson. He was known as a happy, energetic, and a typical little boy who loved wrestling. That's how a Milwaukee family is remembering the 12 year old. His body was found last night at a home near. I don't understand between three to six years, the mother is not seeing the son that she gave birth to. If you ask me, she did not care. Let me throw this out there because this is probably going to happen. They're more than likely going to try to make burial arrangements for this boy. And you're more than likely going to see what? I was hoping somebody would have said it. I didn't see nobody typing in the chat yet. Go fund me. Why did nobody say that? I thought y'all was going to be quick on your feet. There's more than likely going to pop up a go fund me. And I'm encouraging you guys to ignore it. If you can ignore your child for three to six years, for not three to six months, not three to six weeks, not three to six days, I couldn't, I couldn't avoid my child for three to six hours. Three to six years, if you ask me, you should not get a MFing thing. Huh? Talk to me. Somebody please tell me. When I've said something that's not that's not accurate. Is that correct or am I wrong? That's why we have a chat. Please tell me if I'm wrong. If they put it up, somebody let me know. I would love to see it. And I want to make sure that any, this, this is why it's so important to share these videos. This is why it's so important to hit that share, hit the like, leave a comment. Because the more that YouTube puts us in the algorithm, more people will see this. And you need to know that that alleged mother does not or any of the family members don't deserve a damn dime off of the back of this baby who died at the hands of his father, which I believe his father beat him to death and starved him to death. Tell me when I'm wrong, please. 38th in Elmhurst on the city's north side. Investigators now think he may have been dead for days, maybe even weeks. Megan Lee joins us now live from MPD headquarters with new information in this troubling case. Megan. Definitely troubling, Charles. Tonight, we're learning from the medical examiner's office that Jakari's disappearance could have ranged from around Labor Day until yesterday. However, there are still so many questions revolving around this little boy's death. I mean, was he reported missing? Did school notice that he wasn't in class? And why is MPD calling this an, a homicide or is not calling this a homicide? Sorry, my bad. But the medical examiner's office is, although there are all these questions, his family still gathered tonight to honor his life. Green balloons filled the sky near the intersection of 39th and Elmhurst in Milwaukee. Green was 12 year old Jakari Robinson's favorite color. Stop with the balloon releases. I keep saying that people that is not a way to pay homage and tribute to a loved, a lost loved one. Light some candles, make some shirts. Pray, gather, march, stop getting balloons and letting them fly off into the air. And then they just pollute the atmosphere. They pollute the ponds. They kill animals and they trash people's yards and, and trees. Stop doing that. That's dumb. And you know what? And I'm actually right about this. In some states, they're actually making it illegal. You could actually get fined for doing that now. Mm-hmm. Look at that. That's dumb. 
family of Jukari, otherwise known as Kari, hugging each other a little tighter tonight. Messages showing how loved he was. It don't even feel real. Um, just from the years getting the call and then progressing to today, it don't. I woke up. It was just really thinking of my thoughts like, dang, he, my little brother really gone. And Jordan Robinson is one of 10 siblings of Jakari. He says his little brother was fun. Uh, he loved WWE for sure. He was always like one of the little brothers. Jordan says his brother's life was cut too short. Not seeing our little brother grow up kind of hurt a little bit. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I wish we could spend more time with him. The medical examiner says Jakari was malnourished and was decomposing to the point they couldn't positively identify him. I wanted to tell him more and be there for him, but like, I really like it didn't happen like the way I, you know, unfortunately, you know, tragic. Jordan is still searching for answers, but right now he is focused on supporting his family. Me and my brother got to be stronger than ever. We the ones that got to hold, hold everybody together. I'm trying to, and he trying to. He, you know, and it's like a lot of grieving days ahead for us, and just trying to be there for them. That's it. Jordan tells me his family needs time to grieve, and they want closure. Tonight, the Milwaukee Police Department hasn't made any arrests. Days after his death, family of 12-year-old Jakari Robinson tried to focus on his life. He was my everything, my everything. Jakari was Jakari, no matter what. Jakari's older brother, Jay Moy, talked with Fox 6 over the phone Monday. Jay says he found his brother's body inside their father's home near 39th and Elmhurst, October 10th. A newly filed criminal complaint says Jakari was lying on the living room floor, decomposing. Yeah, it was a... Um... It was very hard for me and my family. The boy's father, Ramon Moy, is now wanted for child neglect and failing to report the death. The criminal complaint says Moy had been acting abnormally before the boy's body was discovered. Prosecutors say he claimed he had cancer. Prosecutors say Jay told police their father had been dodging him and his family, which is why he went to the home that day. What feelings do you have towards your dad right now? I'd rather not really speak on that right now. The criminal complaint says Moy claimed he kept Jakari away from family as a punishment for the boy's bad behavior. Prosecutors say an autopsy revealed the 12 year old had several broken bones and was malnourished. He only weighed 54 pounds. Right now, I just think us as a family, we just. We just want to figure out everything for ourselves. Milwaukee is still looking for answers for a boy whose life was cut short. Aaron Maben, Fox 6 News. If you ask me, somebody knows where this father is. Let me get his face back up here. We have a hashtag, hashtag see something, say something. If somebody knows where he is. The best thing you could do is report it, turn him in, call the police, call the tip line, and get him turned in. And he needs to answer for this because this baby boy did nothing to deserve this. He couldn't speak for himself nor defend himself against the tyranny of his own father. And I wish that you guys would do me a favor and share this story so more people can see it of this missing boy. They didn't know where he was. He's being homeschooled. I think that's a red flag. Homeschool, like, I think that ought to automatically involve, especially with this many kids, that ought to be a red flag for CPS to come in and be checking and find out what's going on to the fact that this house was filthy and disgusting. Like, they didn't have any working utilities or anything like that. Like, I'm like, how do you miss this? How do you miss this? They're not going inside the house. They need to go inside the house with a police escort or whatever it is. Like, I, I, I don't know, man. I just think that more could be done. And maybe this is like a job I need to apply for. Maybe I need to work for Child Protective Services. Because one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do a thorough investigation. And if something don't look right, guess what? I'm going to see something. I'm going to say something. I'm going to report it. And I'm going to get your ass turned in flat like that. But if you don't want to have kids, stop having them. It's a choice. For the soul of these children and to that little boy, may he rest in peace, young prince, R.I.P. And let's get justice for him. Let's speak for justice and get these stories shared, okay? Thank you. I know there's quite a bit going on with the war that's going on in the Middle East. And at the same time, I definitely understand how people can be affected by that emotionally. But what I can't accept and what I can't understand is how a situation like this can happen on 
United States soil. And I don't think it can happen. I think it's wrong and I think it should be punished. And I think that it really should have an upgraded, elevated charge like it will be in this case when it comes to like a hate crime. But let me do you guys a favor real quick because I don't want you guys to be triggered by my type of content. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. And I just thought about something. This is so random. But on ESPN, they let Pat McAfee use all kind of cuss words on there on daytime TV. Why people are so offended by my couple of little cuss words from time to time is beyond me. But I digress. I digress. The individual that you guys see on my screen has done something very heinous. And that very heinous thing that he did initially was having a face like this. That's the first thing that he did was heinous. Like, I don't know why you would ever walk out the house like that. Like, get some plastic surgery or, I don't know, pick a different face. Just hit the reset button on life. Like, just, I don't know. Like, this individual, look, y'all not going to feel bad when y'all hear about what he, what he or whatever it did, it, whatever it is. Kind of reminds me of the Crypt Keeper. I don't know if you guys remember Tales from the Crypt. The Crypt Keeper, y'all remember that? Like, he literally, let me, let me see if I can pause that. That is a bad looking human. Look, at ooh. It looked like life did just whooped his ass. Golly. Like, it looked like somebody, like, y'all remember that scene in RoboCop? <laughs> When it, when it, when uh when he shot the uh the stuff that had the uh the toxic stuff in it and it splashed all on the dude and his skin started falling off of him, this is what it looks like in real life. This man literally looks like. Let me show y'all. I know I am wrong for this and I might go to hell for this by talking one talking about one of God's children, but wow, tell me this man. Don't look like the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> Golly. That's literally what it looks like. Tell me I didn't get it right. Is that not what he looks like? <laughs> if you take the nose off, that's what he looks like. He looks like the Crypt Keeper. See, now that I put it on the screen, now y'all understand why I said that. Come on now. I'm just saying he definitely looks all kinds of meth, meth up, meth up, messed up, meth up. <laughs> they look like they could be twins. I swear that is God awful. Like, I don't know why the devil would give you a face like that, sir. But I'm just saying. I'm getting this story from CNN.com, so thank you so much for the article, not the picture. That was my fault, but nonetheless, a Chicago area landlord was arrested and charged with murder and hate crimes. That's the, it, that's the added charge, hate crimes, after authorities said that he stabbed and killed a six-year-old boy and seriously wounded the boy's mother, allegedly because the tenants are Muslim. Muslim, Muslim, whatever you want to call it, that is their religious belief to be Muslim. And this is the reason that he stabbed and killed this boy and tried to kill the mother. You said that's him. The character is based off a real life story. Look, you know what? I would totally believe you. I think that man really is the Crypt Keeper, the real life Crypt Keeper. I truly believe it. That fool, I mean, that idiot, I mean, that man's name. Let me get him back up on. Ooh, that is a bad looking man. Joseph M. C. Zuba, C. Z. U. B. A., 71 years old. That man looks like he's 171 years old. 
He was charged with first degree murder, premeditated, attempted first degree murder, two counts of hate crime and aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. The Will, the Will County, Illinois Sheriff's Office said in a news release. And y'all, man, look. It's sad what happened to this baby. Well, we got to laugh to keep from crying because this is really, really sad. Real sad. The U.S. Justice Department has also opened a federal hate crime investigation into the attack. U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland announced on Sunday, and I'm going to tell you guys what I personally think, especially with this man being 71 years old. They're talking about making it a federal offense and all of this stuff. It's really not going to matter, and I'm going to tell you why here in a moment. The sheriff's office said that Joseph M. Z uh, Zuba did not make a statement to detectives, but investigators determined that the victims were target, targeted by the suspect due to them being Muslim and the ongoing Middle Eastern conflict involving Hamas and the Israelis. The family is Palestinian and came to America seeking what we all seek, a, ref a refuge to live, learn, and pray in peace. And I think that they should be able to do that. I'm going to skip them talking about our senile prison, and I'm going to skip that. Authorities also authorities also were called to the residence in an unincorporated Plainsville Township, roughly 40 miles southwest of Chicago, shortly before noon Saturday after a woman called 911 saying her landlord had attacked her, according to a sheriff's office. When deputies arrived, they found Joseph sitting on the ground near the near the home's driveway. And the uh, the release said, "The two victims were found in the bedroom, each with multiple stab wounds." This is the part that gets real crazy. And look at him holding the American flag, and this baby did nothing to deserve this at all. Here's where I get a bit somber, because you have to be a hateful mf'er. And I want to cuss so bad. I want to cuss so bad. But I know I'm going to try to keep it a little bit PG. This boy was stabbed 26 times. Why? Because he's Muslim. Because his ethnicity his nationality is Palestinian. And that's why he needed to be stabbed 26 times and he tried to kill his mom too? Huh. Oh, he's going to hell for sure. Thank you for that. Absolutely. So needless to say, stabbed 26 times with a military style knife and the boys succumbed to his injuries. Clearly, he was not going to survive that. That takes a lot of hate. The 32-year-old mother, the woman, who had more than a dozen stab wounds is recovering at the hospital. That is amazing that she survived. So keep a prayer. Now, see, if a GoFundMe comes up for the mother, I think that that would be totally awesome and people should support that. Oh, let me skip this. Uh, the president came in and said something, the alleged president. I think we're going to skip those statements let's go here um let's skip that also it was it's talking about the boy recently celebrated his birthday we could skip that also but let me say this here's the part that i really wanted to get across this fool is 71 years old how much prison time can you give him even if they gave him a death sentence for what he did, he's already lived 71 years of life. Like, I mean, just he's knocking on death's door as it is. So if you were to upgrade this to a federal crime, what is that going to give him? Like multiple life terms in prison? I mean, it'll just be a technicality. To be honest, I don't expect him to live that much longer, especially the way that his face looks like. He just looks like he's ready to check out any minute. Like this man is pretty much, let me see if I can get it back up here. This man looks like he's ready to give up the ghost at any moment. 
But that little boy did nothing to deserve this. His family did nothing to deserve that. And and the reason that he did it is no excuse. That ain't no excuse at all. I don't care what's going on in the world. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Let me take a pause real quick. Rule for eyes. If you're listening, I want to say thank you. I got your $5 super chat. If you're listening, thank you. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Definitely appreciate you. Um, Ashley sent in a super chat, said, absolutely love watching you, Jay. I swear we have the same personality. Ashley, if you're listening, thank you so much for your super chat. And somebody donated by way of PayPal, which is Ava. Love everything that you do from Australia. I will keep the amount that you donated private. But if you are listening, it says Ava XX. If you're listening, thank you. Thank you so much. Anita Swain, thank you for gifting a channel membership to Painfully Awkward. You now have the 30-day channel membership by way of Anita Swain. And also, thank you to Rhonda W. First Super Chat, thank you for the $10 Super Chat showing some love. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Y'all continue to keep that going. Everybody can show a little bit of love. If you guys would, do me a favor and please hit that thumbs up and share this video so more people can see it. And I got a couple of news videos. Let's hear what they got to say. A horrific story is unfolding tonight as the war between Hamas and Israel appears to be fueling tensions here at home. A 71-year-old man charged with a hate crime after the fatal stabbing of a six-year-old boy. His mother was also seriously injured. Police say both were targeted by the suspect for being Muslim. Here's ABC's Alex Perche. Tonight, six-year-old Wadia Alfayumi brutally stabbed to death his mother in serious condition after an alleged hate crime believed to be motivated by the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas. Sheriff's deputies say their landlord, 71-year-old Joseph Zuba, targeted his tenants inside their home simply because they were Muslim. And she said that he knocked on the door and that he attempted to choke her and said, you Muslims must die. Deputies responded Saturday about 40 miles outside of Chicago in Plainfield Township, finding Hanan Shaheen and Alpha Yumi inside a bedroom in their home. Shaheen stabbed more than a dozen times, the boy with 26 stab wounds, a military style knife with a seven inch blade later found in his abdomen. She ran into the bathroom and called 911. And by the time she came out, he had located and murdered her child, six year old Wadia. Zuba found by deputies sitting in the driveway. Late today, the boy's father lost for words through a translator only asking for one thing. To bring accountability for his um, life taken too soon. Lindsay, tonight that mother is expected to survive and Zuba faces multiple counts, including first degree murder and hate crime charges. Lindsay. Alex. A horrific crime in Will County to tell you about this morning. This one is believed to be an act of hate, and it leaves a six-year-old dead. We've got Joni joining us with more. Joni, good morning. <clears throat> good morning. The president has weighed in. The FBI is investigating. Jewish and Muslim organizations have uh, made statements. They are in mourning for the death of the six-year-old boy, allegedly killed out of racial hate. 71-year-old Joseph Shuba is accused of fatally stabbing the boy and trying to kill his mother Saturday. Six-year-old Wadia Al-Fayume was stabbed 26 times. His mother told authorities that Shuba knocked on the door and attacked her. She fought him, ran to a bathroom to call police, and when she came out, found her son. They had rented from the man for about two years. There was no sign of potential violence. In fact, the landlord had built a treehouse for the boy in the backyard. Police say the suspect targeted them because of the war between Israel and Hamas. I ask you what level of hate, blind hatred, can cause such an act? And for us to reflect on the conditions in which such an act can occur. I'll close by saying that this atmosphere has created a monster out of a normal man who once built a treehouse. President Biden said in a statement, this horrific act of hate has no place in America. In related news this morning, the Justice Department is launching an investigation into an alleged hate crime in Illinois. 
where a six-year-old Muslim boy was stabbed to death. And y'all hear how cynical that dude is? Talking about he built this boy a treehouse and then you could turn around and kill him like that? He, like, for what? Just doesn't, that doesn't make any sense at all. And his mother was injured over the weekend. Police in Plainfield Township, southwest of Chicago, say the victims were chosen because of the recent attack in Israel. As Catherine Harridge reports, the details are disturbing. Landlord is killing her baby with a knife. Wadia Al Fayumi had just turned six years old a couple of weeks ago. And on Saturday, the sheriff's office says the family's 71 year old landlord, Joseph Zuba, attacked the boy and his mother. The boy was stabbed 26 times. His mother was stabbed over a dozen times and survived, describing the horrific attack in text messages from the hospital. He knocked on the door and that he attempted to choke her and said, you Muslims must die, and attempted to stab her and stab her. According to the local sheriff's office, the victims were targeted by the suspect due to them being Muslim and the ongoing Middle Eastern conflict. Zuba is charged with first-degree murder, attempted first-degree murder, and two counts of a hate crime. His arrest comes as the FBI is on alert across the country, saying Hamas or other foreign terrorist organizations could exploit the conflict to call on their supporters to conduct attacks on our own soil, but added most of those threats are not credible. The boy's killing came days after local Muslim leaders issued a warning about creating an anti-Muslim environment that could lead to someone getting hurt. He paid the price for the atmosphere of hate. For CBS Mornings, I'm Katherine Herridge. In suburban Chicago, a packed funeral and unimaginable grief for a boy murdered, police say, because of war a world away. It's not our war. We need to save our kids. Prosecutors say six-year-old Wadia Al-Fayumi, a Palestinian-American boy who loved soccer and Legos, was killed Saturday. According to police, he was stabbed 26 times with a military-style knife. His mother hospitalized after she was stabbed a dozen times. Prosecutors say the family's 71-year-old landlord, Joseph Zuba, attacked her over the conflict in Israel. They said Zuba's wife told them he had been listening to conservative talk radio on a regular basis and believed his tenants were going to call over their Palestinian friends to harm them. Zuba faced... Let me address this because you do kind of bring up a point that I've talked about quite a bit. And we had somebody in the chat asking, um, how could the mom run for cover without her son? Technically, she didn't. So the mom, I believe they said from the article, I have to pull it back up, but I think the mom was stabbed quite a few times herself. The boy was stabbed 26 times and the mom was stabbed more than a dozen times. To be real, and y'all know I'm usually pretty harsh, like I always talk about you know, a parent should protect their child with their life. And I kind of feel like she did do her job. She did. She did. In a situation like this, I just don't really know how much more you could have done. But I do appreciate the fact that you brought it up because that is something that I talk about quite a bit. But the fact that she was stabbed and then he went for her son, it's like the only other thing she could have did was really just try to just go for help or try to overwhelm him at 71 years old. I'm just some 71 year old people can still be kind of strong. You know what I'm saying? He's still a man. She's still a woman. So I'm not really sure if she could have really overwhelmed him, even though he's, he's old. You know, you hear people talk about old man strength. So I don't know, but I do understand what you're, what you're asking his murder and hate crime charges in Illinois. This morning, the FBI and DOJ have opened a federal hate crime investigation. Wadia's own father speaking in Arabic, calling his son a martyr. Are people here afraid? Yes, people are afraid. People are afraid. I'm afraid to leave my house. This as the FBI warns of mounting threats against Muslim and Jewish people nationwide. You Zionist pigs are disgusting. This morning, an Ohio man faces charges for police say going to multiple homes with Israeli flags and making anti-Semitic remarks. This as tensions are high across the country.
Mounting threats against Muslim and Jewish people nationwide. You Zionist pigs are guff. Okay, let me address this. Let me say this. People like this guy right here go into people's houses and saying messed up stuff like this, like hate speech. To me, I think that type of thing should should get you jail time. What do y'all think about that? What do y'all think about that? I think something like this should get you jail time. I think something like this, because especially this is a much more sensitive thing and you're threatening people or, or, or um, harassing people because of their religion. To me, that should also be a hate crime, too. What do y'all think about that? I think because you're dumb enough to go do this, that should get you five years in prison. Because I'm going to tell you, if you if you were to come to my door like that, mm, you're going to probably meet an ass whooping. Just saying, maybe, maybe worse. Because I don't really know what you're coming there to do or what type, like what you're trying to stand on. And whatever pedestal you're standing on, I'm going to probably knock you off of it. Hello. I believe in the castle doctrine and your right to stand your ground and not take no shit from nobody. People like this, I think five years in prison. Well, well, I, I, I didn't know. Like, why would you like your ass got plenty of time? You, you didn't have to be at work, taking care of your family, protecting your family, going to the grocery store. You didn't have nothing else better to do but go harassing people five years in prison. Yes, I think that's what you should get. Just a piece of crap. This morning, an Ohio man faces charges for police say going to multiple homes with Israeli flags and making anti-Semitic remarks. This as tensions are high across the country with protests on both sides since the conflict began. In D.C., multiple people were detained Monday for blocking the White House gates after hundreds marched for peace in Gaza. War is never, ever a solution for anything. Back in Illinois, there was heavy security guarding an innocent boy's funeral. One mourner saying it's the smallest coffins that are the heaviest. He was less worse to his mom. Mom, I'm fine. You know what? He is fine. He's in a better place. So much pain, obviously, at that funeral yesterday. Uh, back to the criminal case here. The judge in that hearing said yesterday said he would appoint a public defender for Joseph Zuba. According to court documents, it doesn't appear that's happened yet. We also reached out to his wife, and so far we've gotten no response. And then a final note on that, the judge also called Zuba a threat to the community and denied his pretrial release. Finally, at that funeral, mourners called for a stronger condemnation from President Biden of anti-Muslim rhetoric. The president, in a statement, said this horrific... I don't want to hear nothing the president got to say. I really don't. But let me say this. It almost makes me want to go put on, like, like get some Israeli flag T-shirts or maybe go get an Israeli flag and put it outside of my place. Boy, I wish your MF a would. I really wish a person would that imagine, imagine, let me see where, where we at. Make sure we're good. I think we're good over here. So I want y'all to imagine if somebody had um, an African flag outside of their house or had an Israeli flag or a Mexican flag, pull up on somebody's house. If you want to, I think that should be grounds to be able to defend yourself as if somebody were threatening your life. And I'm going to say this very clearly. Leave people alone. If they got something going on in the Middle East, we're not living over there. Okay? We got to start separating the difference between what they got going on over there that's been going on for a very, very long time. That's not our issue here. Now, people who might be from there or might have ties there might feel different. But that is not our issue here in America, not here, not today. We got enough problems here. Trying to attack somebody here for what's going on over there, I think, is a weird thing. Especially when we have homeless people here. Especially when we have people that are in the child protective services system that need parents, that need foster parents. When we got people here that can't eat, can't keep their lights on. 
right? We have we have veterans here who are homeless in America. We have teachers that can't freaking pay their bills. We got problems here. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Worry about home. This should have never have happened. Attack this baby and attack that woman. Attack that mother for nothing. If you ask me, she absolutely defended her son with her life. And the last little bit of energy she had, she tried to call 911 and call for help and did, which is how he ended up getting caught. And I think whatever punishment they give him, he absolutely deserves it. Federal uh, upgraded it to a federal charge, all of that stuff. Throw everything on it. I think that's good. Whether he'll live to see his actual justice in the end is beyond me. But RIP to that little boy and uh, keep the mother in your prayers and to the father, man, just they shouldn't have to worry like this. It's just really sad, man. And I just hope they understand this ain't all Americans. This is not this 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 is this is not what we believe. We believe to the, 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 uh, the freedom of speech. We believe in the right to religion and live your life. You had a right to believe in whoever you want to believe in and all of that good stuff. And I don't think anybody should have the right to impose on that. Let me know what you guys think about this. I think that man deserves multiple life sentences, even though he ain't going to live to see it that long. Put him in prison with some Muslims. I think that'd be a beautiful thing. Let me know what you guys think about this story, okay? Thank you.